Hey Cam fam, welcome back to the channel. Today we are having another episode of Hashtag Girl House. But before we head on to the actual vlog, please make sure you're already subscribed and you've clicked on that bell button so you're always notified whenever I have new videos like this one. Okay, so today we are finally going to talk about my walk-in closet in depth and I'm also going to give you some tips in case you're about to build your walk-in closet or you want to build your future walk-in closet. So, uh, let's begin. Okay, so I have here again my handy dandy iPad. Let me just walk you through the steps of how I finally came up with my walk-in closet. So as you've seen in my previous walk-in closet vlogs, you've seen already two. Yeah, you've seen two walk-in closet vlogs. And I'm a girl with a lot of stuff. <laughs> I will accept it because I did deny I really have a lot of stuff. Which is why I need a walk-in closet that would be able to fit all of them. And that I would be able to maximize. Maximize space-wise. So before meeting with all the different walk-in closet suppliers, I went through my old closet first and really checked all the measurements. So when I say measurements, I made sure to measure all my tops, all my dresses, all my pants, everything. Vertically and horizontally. So vertically so that I would know the specific height requirements I need for let's say the racks, the shelves, and everything else. And then also the width so that I know let's say for example right now I have this much width space for my closet that contains all my tops. And I feel na sobrang skip nun So I know that for my next closet, it has to be wider than the closet that I have now. I've already done two walk-in closets in my life. So I am already pretty familiar with my closet space needs which is why I was very very determined to nail this walk-in closet because you know it might be my final walk-in closet who knows this is the file that I sent first our architects first so that they would be able to plot how big my walk-in closet should be so this came in in the early early stages pa so that they could really see na okay this walk-in closet that they allotted for me kakasha ba lahat ng stuff ko so I really sent it to them you'll see there I sent measurements of my dream height my dream width for all of them and all also, I sent them like shoe closet also like how big the shoe closet should be, how big the bag closets should be. I also made sure to include my accessories and where I'm gonna put my makeup, my beauty stuff. Kasi nga, as I've said, I've already done two walk-in closets before which is why wala nang lokohan. Like I really know my needs and I really wanted to make sure that everything fit. And usually kasi with my walk-in closet, it contains everything. Not just my clothes and accessories and beauty and makeup products but also my supplies. So all my extra shampoos, extra conditioners, extra to makeup, I put all of them there. So I really wanted to make sure also I have ample storage for that. So after sending that, the architects came up with the layout and they were like, okay, this is our proposed layout. And I was like, okay, this is kind of fine already. We can just fine tune it with whoever walk-in supplier we go with. So in terms of walk-in closet suppliers, there are a lot of different kinds. I know some of you might not go for modular closet suppliers, which is what I went for. Uh, you might be going for, let's say, a construction company or like a custom closet maker that's not really focused focused on that like that's not really their specialty so then if you do that then it will highly depend on their workmanship and also there might be limited options in terms of storage solutions closet solutions and all those like fancy closet stuff where you know they're just smarter solutions for you to use I personally love going for modular closet suppliers and these companies are usually the ones that are very very used to making walk-in closets so they can really also help you maximize your space and also think of smarter solutions and also offer you a lot of different materials, a lot of different finishes, a lot of different designs, so there. So as I've said in my previous vlog, I met up with a bunch of closet suppliers. Everyone sent in their proposals according to my needs. So I sent them the four sketch that I showed you guys earlier and also these pegs. So I was very, very specific that this is the type of look I'm going for. I want something very, very minimalist. It's very different from my first two closets. I've definitely shed the super duper madame, super duper bling look. I wanted something really clean and something that I don't normally see in the closets here in the Philippines because I feel like people usually go for yung mga glass cabinets or let's say reflective surfaces or they go for like the totally open or they would go for like the veneer look so I really wanted something super different it's kind of like Kim Kardashian West approved that type of palette because I really have this dream of going from floor to cabinets to ceiling in just one color I wanted everything in just one 
beautiful color. So yeah, I sent them these pegs. I told them that out of all the cabinets, I only wanted the shoes and the bags to have these glass cabinet doors. All the rest will have these super duper plain, kind of like a beigey, sand-ish color. And then I was also very specific. I didn't want any LED lights on all the cabinets. I just wanted it on some open shelves and also for the bags and the shoes because LED lights are expensive. So if you want your entire cabinet to have LED lights everywhere, then it's going to be expensive, especially if they're from abroad and they're not local LED lights. So I was very, very specific. I also told them that somewhere in here is a vault. So it needs to like, these are things that you have to think about, like where are you going to put your accessories? Are you going to put a vault or a safe inside your walk-in closet so that should also be already communicated to your closet suppliers and then aside from that I also gave them the layout so that they can get the measurements of the space and they can best propose like okay these are the cabinets we're gonna put here these are the sizes and blah 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 so normally it would take these suppliers around one week or so like give or take to come up with the render and plans for your walk-in closet so I'm gonna show you the winner dun, 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 dun. what you're seeing on your screen right now is the renders for this particular render it's not super duper true to tone what i picked wasn't as peachy blushy it was really more neutral in color and you'll see there that i have my shoe cabinets on one side so that's the first thing you'll see once you enter my walk-in closet so you'll see the shoe cabinets right there the last cabinet by the window this one right here is a bag cabinet and then another bag cabinet here and i have my island here and on towards here is my makeup area my beauty area so you'll see here another angle so there that's my beauty area these floating shelves are for my beauty products and then i also asked to include drawers here so that there's easy access as well for my makeup and then you'll see here the cabinets now for my clothes if you zoom in, the handles that I chose are very, very subtle. There are a lot of different handles. Originally, I wanted something that didn't have any handles, something that's really hidden. But the only way to make this possible with this supplier is to do push open cabinets, which is like this. And I was advised that because the cabinets are so high, I think the height of the room is like 2,800 mm. So that's 2.8 meters. That's a bit too high. The doors are a bit heavy for push open. So it might not last, you know, like it might be good for a few years years and after a few years it's not so good anymore so they advised against it so they gave me different options and this is the best option that i came up with it's not so expensive it's still a very clean look and it's still very very subtle nothing shiny nothing anything pag nakita niyo mga render of walk-in closet so for example these mirrors and these like chairs those are their own art lang, just so you can best visualize it so you'll see my island over here has also an art there. This is really not included, that glass top thing. It's not glass top, it's all closed. And then if you enter, because my walk-in closet actually has this main area, and then you'll enter through here, and that is where the rest of my clothes are. So that is my runway aisle. <laughs> no, just kidding. So this is, again, all the clothes still. So when you choose your walk-in closet, usually they also have their proposed materials already. So these are no longer proposed materials, but these are the materials that I approved already after choosing. So personally, even though during the pandemic, I really made it a point to visit the walk-in suppliers showroom because I want to see their workmanship. I want to see how the mechanisms work. I want to see how swift and like how smooth the doors open, how the smooth the drawers open. I want to see their finish. I want to be able to touch it. I want to see the insides of the cabinets. So it's really Really, really something that I highly suggest for you to do. You can't just award something based off of this. You need to see the quality of their work and the materials that you're going for in person. Especially when it comes to choosing swatches because it's always, always, always different when it's just photos. No matter how true to life that is, it's still different when you see it in real life and in daylight, not in yellow light, in the proper light where you can see the real colors. So for my cabinets, it's in lacquer finish. So usually for walk-in closets, you might be choosing from laminates or lacquers. And for walk-in closets, for me, I think lacquers are much better, especially for wear and tear. They're much more durable. So lacquer is like a paint as opposed to laminate, parang put on top lang. So sometimes if you see if hindi maganda yung quality ng laminate or hindi maganda yung quality ng paggawa, like the laminates after a few years would tend to like warp so then they would do this which is ugly with lacquer in a man if it's not so good finish then then uh, what you'd have to worry about is mga scratches ganon, some paint chipping off but i think that's much easier because if it's a laminate then you usually replace the whole thing as opposed to lacquers where you could just 
And then they also showed me the interior finish. So that's the finish of the insides of your cabinet. I went with tweed. It's like a fabric feel, which is super duper nice. And also I really like this texture because it doesn't look dirty right away. So it's a fabric texture. It's not really like fabric fabric na. But it's basta. And then we have Stop Sol, which is the glass that we're using for my bags and shoes. So this one has sort of like a bronze gold finish. And then like when the lights are closed, it's kind of reflective. And then when the lights open, kind of reflective, a little bit opaque. And then when you open the lights inside, it's gonna be transparent and you'll see your shoes and the bags in all their glory. So yeah, and then they show you also the frame for the glass cap. So then on the next page, you'll see the complete layout of the cabinet already. So usually they'll show you meron ka mahikita mga A, B, C, D, E. These are called elevations. So it's easier for everyone to understand everyone. You'll just say on elevation A, the first cabinet needs to be choo 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 choo. So there. So this is the overall look. They show you everything, all the measurements, the widths the depths of all the different closets. So you'll see my cabinets only play around 875, 975, 1175 up widths. So usually kasi for all these different suppliers, they come with their standard widths already for their modules. For example, for this particular supplier, they have 875, 975, 1175. So you can say na I only want, let's say, 1100 for that. Because it will depend on the style and the design that you go with. Let's say the cabinet style that you went with, they only have these specific sizes for standard of course they can go for a different size that's not in their standard sizes this will have to be custom already and if it's custom then it also means that it's more expensive so it's always best to work with standard sizes already same goes for the height so let's say for them the height of their cabinets they can go as high as 2580 so even though my existing height is 27 for the space they can maximize that but really inside the space is only 2580 their next standard height is already higher than that, na siya So, ganon. So, if you see here, elevation A, which is the part dun sa my hallway ko na, which is where the runway walk is. So, everything is really measured for me. So, you'll see here na, I have a mix of shelves and racks. You'll see here that my rack length is actually around 2,000 something. Like, it's more than 2 meters yung rack height ko, meaning the reach for my rack. And this is really something that we measured. Normally, kasi the closet suppliers would always probably peg it at 1 point something meters lang. But because I'm taller and I could really reach naman comfortably up to 2 point something, then I told them that I want to increase it. I want to make sure my rack is high so that there's more space for my dresses and for my tops. Because my dresses and tops are pretty long. So, you'll see here on Elevation A, the first cabinet there we have 1600 allotted there so those are for my winter coats so everything talaga that i put here in my closet they have a specific purpose like i didn't just say that i want like let's say five cabinets na racks and then bahala na when i move in i really wanted to be super specific to make sure talaga that i won't regret it in the future and that everything talaga that all my clothes would really fit and they have designated spaces in my walk-in closet so it's a lot of work in the beginning but i feel that it makes your life easier towards the end so then when you move in you know where everything goes and you know that every single item has a place inside your walk-in closet. So yeah, so this is for my trench coats. And then you'll see at the bottom, there's pa rin shelf because I have a lot of folded stuff. Obviously, if you have these cabinets, I mean, you can put two and maximize both and don't have shelves on top and at the bottom. But it's just not practical because no one can reach them that high. And of course, it's so annoying to always get like a ladder or a step ladder to get something, right? So that's just the proper height. Like that's the highest I can go that I can easily reach the hangers of my clothes. And then yung mga excess space, di pa rin yung because those I will use as storage. Use at the ass is for stuff that I don't normally use. So let's say that could be for my thermals or let's say I don't need it for clothes Now I can put all the other stocks there like my extra beauty stuff. And then at the bottom, since I can reach that easier, then that's where I'm gonna put my sweaters because I sometimes wear them even though I live in a tropical country. I could also put like let's say hats and stuff like that. So that's easier. I could just sew other clothing stuff. And then beside it, you'll see there, there are two racks as well. So this one has upper and lower racks. These are for my tops and my blazers. Naman. So I really Really measured everything. So when I say that I measure the length of my clothes, you don't just measure your clothes, you measure them on the hanger. So you measure from the tip of the hanger down to your clothes so that you can really, really tell like how much you need for the height. And then you'll see there, there's a pull-out tray. So that pull-out tray is really useful. I could put like bikinis there. It's really kind of like a shallow pull-out tray lang, but it's really, really useful. I feel like it really maximizes the space really, really well. And then on the last naman are shelves. If you've seen in my previous walk-in closets, I have at least have one one cabinet 
full of shelves and this is where I put all my knits because I really feel sayang. It takes up so much space when you hang everything but not everything needs to be hung and actually some clothes are better folded. Let's say mga knits. Mga knits kasi they don't really get wrinkled so there's no point in hanging them and also some knits that are heavy if you hang them then they stretch so it's really much better to just fold them in shelves. So that's why I have that. And then you see I also already pinpointed yung like height of the shelf. Usually at this early stage naman it's not really something that's very important for you to do but for me I wanted to do it because I'm so sure that towards the end stages of our construction and towards the finishing stages of our construction of Cocker House I'll get so dizzy na and so busy because you know the closer you are to the finishing the busier it gets and I would get confused with everything so I wanted like now that I'm already sitting down from my walk-in closet lahat ilalagay ko na para when it's time for them to put the shelf they don't need to ask me anymore everything's already there but of course this is easily adjustable you can easily adjust it on site as well you could choose to do that later on okay and on to elevation B so this one naman again you'll see there's like a 1 150 height so that is for my pants for my trousers at least so I really measured everything also with my hanger so I really needed that much space for my long pants so that I can make sure that everything fits and then below that you'll see there's a pull out pants rack so this is something that Yanni really loves in all my closets is this rack where you could just push open and then when it opens it's for your jeans so naka fold na siya dun sa rack itself so you don't really need much space for that 770 mm is fine because these are just jeans anyways and then beside it it's not pull out rack na but it's just a normal rack again it's still 770 mm so this one I was thinking for my short skirts short shorts that I can't really fold I need to hang so then use it for that. So both the 1150 are for my pants. So my pants kasi from my previous walk-in closets, lagi na lang hindi ka siya. I never realized that I always buy pala so much pants. Trousers, I mean. So I really need a lot of trouser space which is why I allotted so much. It's 875 times 2 so it's around like 1,000... 750 total. So laki 1.7 meters for my pants. And I'm happy about this. Next then, you'll see 1,920. So these naman, these two cabinets, the 1,000 is for my winter coats also. Pero mga shorter na hindi na mga trench coats level. And then underneath naman, the 920 is for my skirts. Because I actually have a lot of long skirts as well. And then you'll see here on Elevation C, which is the NASA side where my beauty products are. You'll see here, I have three cabinets na 1,600 yung length. Because I realized that I actually have so much dresses. So, so much many dresses talaga. Like, I think it's because it's my lazy day go-to outfit. So, which is why I just keep buying dresses. And before, I'd always separate mga long dresses and short dresses. But then, it gets confusing because it's not me naman who personally put my clothes there. Sometimes it's Janinensky. Sometimes it's Tess Boomy. So, to make everyone's lives easier, I wanted all my short dresses and long dresses in one whole area na. So, which is why I needed like a bigger area for my dresses. And this is it. Hopefully, my dresses will now fit here with all the cabinets there's always a top shelf and a bottom shelf for storage of other heavier knits and also for other stuff as well. And then you'll see here on the rightmost side, which is the nearest to the vanity table and the window, that will be where my beauty products are. So lahat talaga yung ko, Yoni kasi really wanted our bathroom to be clean because we saw this interior design vlog and Yoni really loved how your bathroom countertop is super clean lang as in you only have like soap there but all your beauty products are hidden. So which is why... I realized hindi kakasha yung beauty products ko sa CR hidden. So, I transferred everything to my walk-in closet which is why this is where I put my hair products, my makeup products, my nail products, everything. So, this actually has light. So, I think this is both functional and also aesthetic. It really gives off that nice feel when open shelves have these lights. And then you see there my vanity table. So vanity table, Yoni really helped me because I'm not really good with like my depths of tables. Like how deep should it be so that it's comfortable and it doesn't feel like I have so little space. So Yoni really oversaw this. And another thing that he contributed is that you'll see beside my vanity table is a cabinet. So that is my bag, my main bag cabinet. And so it's got a certain depth. In the beginning, my vanity table was actually less than my bag cabinet. So he really hated that. He hates that when you go inside the closet, you'll see parang your line of vision goes like this. He doesn't like it that it's not aligned. Like, he thinks it's such an eyesore. Which, at the beginning, I didn't think it was. But then, now that he pointed it out, parang these are the little details that actually make a room look more finished and more polished. So, I said, yeah, you're right. So, we really... 
I, I, I stand corrected. At the beginning, pala, it was the other way around. That table was actually jutting out and the cabinet was deeper. So then he really wanted it to be aligned. So there you go. And then I asked for like a drawer unit. This isn't really that nice. I would have preferred na walang drawers jan. But I needed to think about functionality and that, you know, thinking about this space, I needed it to be able to grow with me. And that's why, you know what? Even though it's ugly, it's not so ugly naman. I'll put drawers there because it's also more functional. It will make my life easier. So these are the things that you need to do with your walk-in closet. You can't just think of aesthetic you also have to think of functionality because you're paying a lot of money for these things you have to make sure that it's something that will be able to grow with you and your needs and then beside it is my bag cabinet so you'll see there nandiyan na rin yung measurements for everything for mine because I really observed all my bags I measure ko sila so okay how much heights do I need ba talaga and what do I usually go for ba do I go for medium bags or small bags or like big bags from there pa lang I really try to envision okay so which height would suit my bag needs better. I mean, you could always go for like uniform heights or bahala ng supplier to think about it. But I feel like so much space is wasted if you don't actually check which height is the most optimal for your bags. That's why you'll see on mine, di sila pantay-pantay. There are different heights for that because you know, there's a science behind Science? There's a science behind it, the formula ko and everything. And then I also thought about like, okay, which ones should be on the highest level? You'll see there like the highest shelf I put on the topmost because right now, at this stage of my life, I don't normally get my super duper big bags. I only get them if we're going abroad, which is not every day, right? Also, my beach bags are usually the bigger bags, and which I don't always use in them, and we're not always at the beach. So those are the ones that I put on top. And then I put like the banga 280 and 230 heights towards the middle and towards the bottom, because those are the bags that I usually use. So then he should not hassle, like I could easily get them. So I'm just explaining to you my thought process so maybe it will help you as well when you make your own closet. And then now we're at the last elevation which is my favorite elevation. It's my shoe and bag cabinet. So this is like a showcase as you can see kind of like my closet here. I feel like when you go inside a walk-in closet that's the nicest area because always your shoes and your bags. So it's either you put it right there like if this is the entry you see it right there like it's the one that greets you right away or you put it by the aisle where you enter so that also greets you. And so it's really nice if your showcase or your main area is easily spotted from the door. So that's why I put my shoe and bag cabinet there. So as you can see, it's a bit weird, my shoe cabinet. You'll see there, there's like a really big height towards the bottom, like 652. This is because I am a, you know, I always feel like I'm living in a winter wonderland. So I have a lot of boots. <laughs> that's for my fashion needs. I have a lot of these like knee-high boots. And so that is why I have that layer over there. The depth of my closet actually allows me to put two shoes in one. So, merong front, merong back. So, I plan to put like, let's say, the left shoe in front and the right shoe at the back so I don't have to like, you know, look through everything. I can see everything from the front but still be able to maximize the space. So, you'll see there also na meron akong 160, 160 na sobrang So, these are for my flats because I have a lot of flats and on normal days, I usually reach out for the flats also. So, that's why I put them right there. Why didn't I put them at the bottom? Because from experience, like here in my old closet. My flats are all at the bottom. It's so hard to see them. It's really super duper hard. So I don't like putting my flats at the bottom. I like them a bit raised so that it's easier to see inside and you'll see all your flats better. So yeah, and then you'll see na medyo low lang rin yung mga shelves ko because recently I've also haven't been buying like super duper high heels. These are really made for my heels. These are really enough for all my shoes. And then on the last cabinet, I turned that into my bag cabinet because my bag cabinet is not enough for just one so that is also a bag cabinet for me in my head it still looks cohesive because it's all shoes and then the two bag cabinets are a bit close to each other in a man and all the cabinets that have the same look they all have the same closet doors and they all have lead strips inside as well so yeah super duper nice really really excited another thing that i learned from my architect naman, one of our architects because they're a duo so we have their architect philippe and architect endica architect endica is very very i think he's kind of bordering ocd i think when it comes to <laughs> alignment like crazy because we went through this with our kitchen and because of that before i wasn't so particular about this but because of architect endika like now i'm particular about it because of how he showed it so you'll see here that i made sure that even though they're all different like these are shoes and these are bags they're all still aligned inside i can choose to make all the shelves in different heights 
I can choose because they're all individual anyway. So I can choose different heights for that. But I still made sure that everything is aligned because of Architect Annika. Because now, I feel that if they're not aligned, they would be such an eyesore. So I made sure that all the shelves, even though they can be adjusted, are all aligned. Because this is, at the end of the day, glass. And if I open the lights, you'll see everything inside. And they all have one switch. So I can't just open this light. If everything opens there, so you'll see everything inside. So I wanted all the shelves to be aligned. And then you'll see here, wala naman akong bag na sobrang laki, di ba? That would need a 652. I still made sure na lang na this is aligned. And then I just added one here. So there. So normally, shoe and bag cabinets usually are much nicer when you put lights inside the cabinet because kasi nga, para siyang showcase, right? And so much nicer. But for you to be able to save, go for LED strips that go vertical. So you just put two strips there as opposed to doing strips on the shelves horizontally because this will cost you more money because that's also more LED strips. So that is a tip and tip I can give you. Instead of doing strips all across the shelves, do it vertically. And then last here, the last final final is my island demand. So you'll see here, nothing much to explain. These are just for like my underwear, my socks, small accessories, necklaces. I wanted something that I'd be able to lock as well. So there are a few drawers here that I'd be able to lock for some valuables. My sunnies will also be here. House clothes as well. And then my scarves. So yeah all on the island. So that is it for my plan. Something practical naman that I also want to share with you guys is to make sure that your supplier goes to the site visit before they actually go ahead and order your cabinets. Because usually if mga modular cabinet suppliers and it's the really good ones, they order from abroad. They order from Europe. So then before they go ahead with the order, they have to do a site visit first so that they can measure the area themselves. Because of course, your plans already have measurements but that's not always followed. Because you know, there's human error. There's also you know, different circumstances that add to it. So they really have to go to the site so that they can do actual measurements of the actual area. Like for example, for me, I have a curved ceiling so it's not like a level ceiling. So they have to do some adjustments to that. They also had to add some plasters and stuff. So there's a lot of things that you have to consider or let's say your wall could also be not pantai. So they also have to a lot for that and to add fillers and stuff like that. Or for example, in this area, there's some piping. So then you can't use pala this entire area. You have to adjust a little bit to make way for the piping and stuff like that. So you really have to ask your walk-in closet supplier to do actual measurements. And then they can go ahead and order after they see the actual space. Usually naman, these walk-in suppliers also have fillers for their designs. So you'll see there that they usually don't maximize the entire space. They will have a few mm, like mga 50 mm or like some 250 mm. Like it depends on them. They have mga fillers there to have an allowance for human error na and to make sure that your cabinets really fit. They don't really maximize the space out. But this is also something that you have to talk to your suppliers about. Like, is there any way we can minimize the fillers? Kasi paminsan, there are some suppliers that go crazy with their fillers. Like, it's just so big. Sobrang sigurista sila. So you could just say that, go to the site, measure it, and we don't need that big of a filler. Just the right amount so that at least you can maximize your closet and use that space. Because you know, 50mm is still 50mm. So that is it. I am so excited to see my walk-in closet come to life. It's gonna take a few months. Right now, lead time is crazy because shipping all over the world is also really, really hard. But hopefully, it'll come on time. If not, we might be moving in and hashtag Kokoro House without my closet still. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching everyone. See you guys on the next episode of Kokoro House.